just got off the train at Norwood Junction in uh, South London. Do you, you know what? I don't think I've ever been here to Norwood Junction Station before. That's another thirst. There'll be a couple on the way today. I love the fact that Norwood, the name Norwood, Norwood Junction is a reminder of the Great North Wood. That's where it comes from, Norwood, Northwood, the Great North Wood that covered this part of South London, stretching up from Kent and Surrey. Oh, there's a book all about it, just dedicated to that, and that I should have looked at <laughs> before doing this walk today. What a fool I am. Oh well, you live and learn. I'll reference it in the edit, and maybe some of the material will go in as voiceover. So what am I doing down here, south of the river, in Selhurst? I know you ask yourself. Well, oh, I'll tell you in a minute. Now this is a cracking bit of modern architecture, I think. What do you reckon? I love it. Look at this, I love a, this kind of signage here that tells you a story of the past. Croydon County Polytechnic, South Norwood branch. Back in the days when Croydon was its county by the looks of it. And the walk we're doing today does touch on this a little bit. Let's just go over South Norwood Recreation Ground and I'll tell you more about the walk today. How's that sound? I mean, I spent a long time teasing what we're doing today when it's probably actually in the, <laughs> the title of the video. But you've got to allow me a little bit of fun, haven't you? Today we're going to walk the Norbury Brook. The Norbury Brook, it's been on my list most of this year. Well, actually, it might go back a little bit longer than that, but I crossed a little, like a tributary of the Norbury Brook, or the Graveny, as it becomes later on, when I walked across Streatham Common doing the Capital Ring Walk. When was that? In March. And today, it's the 5th of November. Remember, remember the 5th of November. And it's claimed to be the most significant tributary of the River Wandle, which I walked with my dear friend, Professor Kate Spencer, 2021, I want to say. So this is long overdue. And as you know, I love <laughs> river walking. I do love river walking. Lost rivers, or as Diamond Geezer calls this one, a not lost river, an unlost river. A bit like the Gorsbrook, I think. Diamond Geezer, the brilliant blogger. If you watch these videos and you're not aware of his blogs, I, I frankly, I don't know what to say. And Diamond Geezer has walked just about everywhere and written a blog post about it. So when I was researching the course of the Norbury Brook, there was a not very uh, helpful Wikipedia post, but there is Diamond Geezer's post. And actually, it is also on the map as well. And I feel like we referenced the Diamond Geezer blog post for another walk over east. I think it was the Gorsbrook. My feeling is that it was the Gorsbrook or the Maysbrook. So thanks again to Diamond Geezer, who is indeed a diamond geezer. And the Norbury Brook rises just on the other side of uh, Selhurst railway sidings, just up on the other side of the road up here, and then we'll find it in a culvert, and then we'll be doing the, some of the inevitable urban river walking zigzag. It's like a kind of dance, isn't it? The urban walking zigzag, but um, just pass out this park into the next park and we'll find the river very early on, very early on, come on. Just on the other side of this railway bridge here, there once ran the Croydon Canal. Yes, there was once a canal that ran through Croydon to connect it to the Grand Surrey Canal down at New Cross. Um, and it, was, it went, ran from 1809 to 1836, but eventually it, it was a failure, <laughs> an economic failure, and was filled in. But on the other side there, you'll find a towpath walk and canal walk. Interesting. Heaver's Meadow, that's what we're looking for, for our first sight of the river. You'll notice I've changed the beanie, it's got, it's got suddenly a lot colder. On the last video, the Stonebridge Brook video, somebody did ask, 
uh, that he pointed out that I seem to use the word brook, stream, river interchangeably. And I wasn't sure whether they were asking me what the difference was or sort of telling me that they're different and I should adjust my language accordingly. But um, either way, I actually don't really know. I mean, officially no. It's like I've asked a similar question about a brook, uh, sorry, a creek. A creek seems to be the last bit of a river before it makes its confluence with a main river, or indeed actually with the sea, I think, as well. But in terms of that, you know, you tend to think a brook is smaller. Obviously, I mean, these are all things that we assume we know, right? We think a brook is a, is a little river, it's a very small river, and a stream likewise. But in reality, you know, when you look at the size of them, sometimes there are things that are called brooks that look big enough to be a river, and there are things that are rivers that seem to be a little bit insubstantial and could be called a brook or a stream. So if anyone knows the definitive answer, I know someone's gonna say, well, if only we had a small mobile device in our pockets that told us the answers to such questions. It'd be boring, wouldn't it? It'd be really boring if we, all we did was that. Imagine sitting in a pub with someone who just looks everything up on the phone. It's no conversation. <laughs> anyway, the river's around here somewhere. <laughs> The river, the brook, the Norbury Brook is officially a brook. There's been an awful lot of uh, rain recently. That's another reason to do a river walk because it's likely to be quite, the water's quite high. And the Norbury Brook is known as being quite a dangerous river, prone to flooding and causing all sorts of mayhem as it bursts its banks, hence it's contained within a culvert. And Diamond Geezer mentions that this, uh, this lovely park here, these little water features over there, was created when they built the Croydon Canal, which is interesting. I think he also refers to it as the SE26 Everglades. Yeah, so I think the river rises the other side of this wall here, but we should be able to see it in its culvert just around that corner. This is always an exciting moment, the first sighting of a river. And there were a few candidates for this week's walk. And the reason, so I'm distracted by the fact that the river might, difficult, no, we won't see it there, it's up here. There are quite a few candidates. And the reason I was so drawn to this one, because that's what I do, I sort of have a, make a short list of potential walks. And then I just tend to be guided by my gut, my feeling, where I'm being pulled towards. And this one really appealed because it reminded me of basically my favourite walk this year. I'll give you a little moment to see if you can guess. But it was when I walked the River Shuttle, uh, back in, I think it was February. It was such a magical walk that it had such a powerful hold over me ever since, really. And this has got a similar vibe to it on paper, I mean, whether it is or not, but this sort of South London suburban river walks have been my highlights of the year. And also when I did the, 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 the rest of the River Quaggy, I did that back, I think that was January, February as well. Again, another magical, brilliant day. There's resonances of it here. It runs through a little water meadow as well. And I think the Norbury Brook is over here. There you go. Can you see that brick arch over there? That's where it emerges from underneath the railway lines. And then it's in that culvert there. Wow. That's kind of amazing. It's always a great moment. That's quite dramatic, isn't it, down there? And to be honest with you, when I first thought about doing the Norbury Brook, I, I, did, well, I did think it would probably be underground much of the way, but I do think it is above ground in, in its culvert for the part where it crosses roads. We can't always see it, I don't think, but it's here. And the reason that these river walks, these little, look, there it is behind me, are so fascinating and such a great tool to use in your urban explorations is they just unlock the landscape. They're a device which opens it up to us and makes it see it in a whole other way, makes it look at its natural history rather than its built environment. Obviously it highlights elements of the built environment as well as the river makes its passage through the suburban landscape. It's always a really important and wonderful, magical moment when you get that first sighting. The first sighting you have lift off and part of the river enters your soul.
and look, you can see the proximity to the, to the railway sidings just up there. There's a train waiting patiently. And you always seem to get a few crows along the banks of a river, these minor rivers. I remember when I walked the Roxeth with Nick Papadimitriou many years ago, and Tim Bradford, author of the Groundwater Diaries. The crows kept us company along the way. So once the Norbury Brook leaves this park here, it's going to go behind houses and we're going to be doing a bit of zigzagging in order to uh, check in with it and, uh, you know, pay our respects as we walk its course. So while the river makes its way between the houses over there, running along the bottoms of gardens, we're going to turn up the road and go um, around to where there is some really obvious kind of references to the river, or one particularly good reference to the river. The name Norbury, North Borough apparently, North Borough, and it's the north of the old manor of Croydon. And indeed, back in the day when Croydon was a county, we saw the signage back there, it marked the boundary between the London County Council and the county of Croydon. So it was, oh, rivers often are used as boundaries, aren't they? Like that, very useful things in that sense. I've seen as well, I probably should have crossed back there. Anyway, never mind. And um, I read somewhere, I'm not sure that it was Diamond Geezer or uh, Wikipedia, that. The quirk of that was that you would, if you're on a tram heading south out of London, you would have to get off the tram and cross the bridge to get on a Croydon tram, from a London tram to a Croydon tram. Quirky. Oh, I've just seen a Maud Milton mosaic over there. So the wonderful artist Maud Milton of Walthamstow created these wonderful uh, mosaic roundels for stations and I think she was making that one when I visited her studio in 2021. I made a nice little video with Maud about her work. And these are really lovely little creations. They're made with the local community who decorate the tiles and uh, the words are things that come up in workshops and the symbols are the patterns are things created with objects that they, they brought along to the workshops and I contributed some to the, the Black Horse Road uh, mosaic. It's a really beautiful project, this. And there's some really key notes for our walk today. Wil Wilfred Sahar, who played for Crystal Palace, was a Crystal Palace legend until very recently. We are in Selhurst, Selhurst Park, their stadium is nearby. Where is it? The Brit School is the famous sort of uh, entertainment academy where many famous people studied. Adele is one of them. I think Amy Winehouse went there as well. And there's lots of others as well. What else have we got? I don't know what the Eagles, can someone tell me what the, oh, the Eagles, that's the name of Croydon. That's the name of the uh, Crystal Palace Football Club. They're called the, the Eagles. I thought it was the band, the Eagles. And Amy Winehouse, that's the, that's the Brit School reference. The Wandle, where we're heading at the end of our walk. Saxon coins, there's a street up here that references that, and for us, the brook, the Norbury Brook. So we're just walking around the other side of the station now with the, with the river running, I think, this is where it goes underground beneath the station. So the Brit School is down there. I've never been around the Brit School, I don't think, before. I should try and find a list of its alumni, but I, say, I, think, uh, I think Adele is probably the most famous and successful of them. And here we have North Brook Road. I don't think the brook is running th through here, but it's certainly running behind here or near here. Um, but it's a first reference to the river written in the landscape. So we're going to go up and around the corner, doing the... Uh, the river shuffle, the river, 
and there we'll get a view of the river as it crosses the roads. So the river is apparently running across this road here, Swain Road. So I'll have to try and find it. Not hard to find. Look at this glorious, beautiful thing. The absence from it makes the heart grow fonder, doesn't it? Wow. It's a, well worthy of a, an odyssey, this river. And an epic poem as well. Should be here, running across Ecclesbourne Road. And here it is cutting across Boswell Road. Soon we'll see it running through a park. Seneca Road. Is Seneca the, the Roman philosopher, I think? No? Or Roman politician? Maybe it's from something else. Maybe I'm just, you know, getting carried away. I really love this winter light. It's fantastic, isn't it? Being a river walk, we must pose the question of what would the deity of the Norbury Brook be like, you know, as in the deities in Ben Aronovich's amazing series of books, the Rivers of London series, the Peter Grant series. Each river has a deity, a, a living being that lives amongst us. And they tend to take on the character of the river. I mean, I can't invoke football again like I did for the River Shuttle, saying that I think I said the deity of the River Shuttle was uh, a reserve team goalkeeper for Charlton Athletic, because that was what my, my Uncle Stan had played for the youth teams at Charlton Athletic in goal. So, so we can't say it's a Crystal Palace thing, it's got to be something else. Who is the deity of the, of the Norbury Brook? And I believe we are now in Thornton Heath. I don't think I've ever been to Thornton Heath, at least not knowingly. And now we go down Brook Road, which uh, actually, as it turns out, does lead us to the Norbury Brook. It's in shadow, but that lovely mosaic over there says Pride of Brook Road. There you go. I wonder if they're referring to the actual brook itself. And of course, mentioning the wonderful Ben Aronovich series, Rivers of London books, allows me to segue in a mention, shoehorn in a mention of my new book, Welcome to New London which is available now from all good booksellers. Uh, because the cover of Welcome to New London is done by the same designer, same artist, as did the Rivers of London series, Patrick Knowles, the wonderful Patrick Knowles. So it's, I'm really chuffed to have had Patrick design the cover for my new book. It's like, wow, absolutely wow. And it's such a lovely cover. I'm so I'm over the moon with it. Can't believe I haven't got a copy with me to wave it at you like that. Yeah, so it's out there now. There'll be links below to where you can buy it. You can buy it, buy it in most places, actually, I think. I'm sure you can walk into most places and buy it, but if you want to get a signed copy in your hands quickly, uh, New and Bookshop, Flocks Books, One Step Bookshop, which is mostly an online bookshop, but they have signed copies. Uh, Flocks in Leighton, they have signed copies in the shop. Francis Road, Leighton, they have them in the shop. I've got to come back down here to Bookseller Crow and sign their books. They've got copies of the books, so the Bookseller Crow. There'll be other places as well. And you can buy it at all the usual online retailers. That's it, I'm not going to keep going on about it. So we'll find the brook just up here on the other side of Thornton Heath Recreation Ground. Looking forward to that a lot. And there are some classic old park railings here, iron park railings. These are great. And here is the Norbury Brook, trapped, imprisoned in its culvert, or ensconced in its culvert, I don't know. But the Nor Norbury Brook does want to flood the, the land around it, yeah, which is what rivers will do. I'm a little bit disappointed that it's not high. I thought, well, not disappointed, that's the wrong word. I thought the water level would be higher due to the amount of rain we've had. It's rained for, a, a God, about two weeks. So it runs all along the edge of this uh, lovely recreation ground here. So we'll take advantage of this long open stretch of the river. You see, I just did it, didn't I? I said river and not brook. I'm using them interchangeably. I can't help it, can't help it.
Look, I love that these railings here are bent, like someone's been desperate to actually get to the river. So we are back out on the streets for a little bit before we get to Norbury Park. And then after that, curiously, the river changes its name. I don't know why, we'll find out. Actually, I think I just worked it out. Saying it made me think, oh, I think I know the reason. But I'll tell you when we get there, because we're not there yet. It's like a little bit to go before we get to that part of the walk. Onwards to Norbury Park. So it crosses Braemar Avenue here. You see it flowing between the houses. Does the same thing on the other side there, but I don't think we'll see it, it's quite overgrown. And it crosses about two more streets before it goes under the main road and into Norbury Park, which is where we will pick it up. Now my old pal Nick Papadimitrio always associated these green railings here with uh, buried rivers, sewage pipes, that kind of thing. I think it was associated with uh, the Metropolitan Water Board. Um, I don't think the Norbury Brook is buried here, but I think it is running up. In, well, probably is running through there in fact. I wonder what that brick building is in there, in that kind of enclosed space. It's not, it doesn't look like a substation. Someone here must live locally and know what that is. Obviously, I start thinking about the Second World War because that's the way my mind is tuned. Or the entrance to a nuclear bunker, something like that, something dramatic. And indeed, here is the Norbury Brook. There you go. Maybe that's the dwelling place for the deity of the Norbury Brook, that building. So it's going to cross the road here and go under the road and through the grounds of a school and that lovely looking white building over there which is probably just a garage isn't it but we'll go into the park and find it there somewhere and we've got some lovely allotments here which is often a feature of these suburban river walks makes me think of the pin and the hogs mill and multiple others the philly brook which is a lost river but is marked by allotments all of them dagenham brook I'm trying to think of one that doesn't have allotments along it. Wow, this is a, a really great park, isn't it? I wouldn't mind betting that this is part of the grounds of a grand house. I will look that up on my phone, actually. That is worth looking up on my phone. So the borough of Croydon website tells us that the corporation of Croydon purchased this land from a builder in 1935. Previous to that, it had been a golf course, but not for very long. Uh, I think the golf course only dated back to 1920, so it was a golf course for 15 years. Before that, it was a series of fields uh, and open land. So not particularly, uh, it's not, not, I mean, it's good <laughs> to, to find out that it wasn't the ground of a grand house, but merely once open land on the southern fringe of what we today call London. But what is interesting is that this land, when it was filled, was owned by Pembroke College Oxford. Pembroke College Oxford. And it's interesting the amount of land in London that was owned by uh, Oxford Colleges. Kensal Green, for example, Kensal Rise, a lot of that is still owned by All Souls College Oxford. Interesting, isn't it? And here's the river gurgling away. Oh, look, actually, what's gurgling? Is it taking some runoff from somewhere? 
that hope mm, that could be grey water from the uh, from the houses. But even so, oh look, and here's another little runoff here. I wonder if it is a tributary though. I wonder if there's a tributary of this tributary. I think there are a couple. Interesting because Google Maps shows it as running above ground here. But you can see, look, it runs underground there where the fence is and it's beneath my feet here. And presumably it comes out on the far side of Norbury Park, after which it changes name. Yep, here it is on the far side of Norbury Park. Running along its edge. It's going to pass under the road and then next time we see it, it'll be known by a different name. I know I keep teasing it, I'll tell you when we get there, when it's changed name. So we're just going to cross Streatham High Street, or Streatham High Road I should say, which Diamond Geezer tells us is the UK's longest high street. There you go. And here, still this first, our first proper bridge. This is a, this is a, a bridge of some note. I think this must be Hermitage Bridge. And at this point now, you're not looking at the Norbury Brook. It's changed its name. It's transformed itself into the River Graveny. So the, the brook has become a river. There you go. That confounds that question even more, doesn't it? And the Graveny, I believe the name is derived from a local landowning family called the Gravenal family, who date back to the, um, the 11th or the, sorry, the 12th or 13th century, implying, I guess, that they might have been um, Norman landowners. Now, I didn't read Diamond Geezer's post about the Graveny. He does separate the walks. There's a separate post about the Graveny, which I did not read, because you can see it on the map, but I have a feeling that it might not be that accessible. We might not be able to see that much of it. Let's crack on anyway. Here we have a lovely clear sight of the river as it crosses the road. Flows under the road and you can see on the other side there diagonally it carries on. Sunset is in about 40 minutes, so just after half past four. Clocks changed last week and <laughs> I can't believe that I'm going to run out of light on this walk. Because on paper, theoretically, it's not a very long walk. Diamond Geezer measures the the Norbury Brook section is just 2.2 miles, I think. Although I feel like I could probably walked more than that, but, um, and yeah, the, the gravity looks even shorter. So I don't think we're looking at a walk of more than four miles. Obviously filming doubles the amount of time it takes, but even so, I thought I'd have plenty of time to this walk. And yet I don't think I will. What I might do now is take the shortest distance to, well, to where, I don't know where it makes its confluence with the Wandle. <laughs> that is part of the problem. So I will look that up and maybe try and get there. Who knows? Let's give it a go. It's, it's what usually happens in the winter, isn't it, on these walks? I run out of light. And another sighting crossing the road here. Every one is a, is a gift, isn't it? Every sighting is a gift, look. This is the context, this little bridge here. And just the other side of it is this little slice of suburban magic. So, so far, I've walked about seven and a half miles today. Take into account some of its walking to the station. It's not that much. So I've walked at least six and a half miles today. So, yeah. <laughs> See, I can make a short walk into an epic. It's one of my great talents. You might say it's my only great talent, but I'll take it. So here we have our glorious river running fast and loud, which is actually a perfect time to end this walk. I know I'll fill you in in a minute, but 
This is an excellent point. Due to the route I would have to take to get to the confluence of the Graveny and the Wandle, it's a good two and a half miles, at least two and a half miles. So uh, there's no, and it gets dark in 20 minutes. <laughs> so that, that maths doesn't, doesn't work. But having said that, the aim today was to walk the Norbury Brook and we have walked the Norbury Brook and a bit of the, of the River Graveny. So actually we've achieved more than we set out to achieve today that was just walking the gravity was just a bonus on the basis that i thought it was actually shorter than the norbury brook section of walk but actually because from here i've got to go in a massive loop around stratton vale to come back however i did start to plan a walk around tooting as a really intriguing story i found in gordon s maxwell's the fringe of london 1925 that i wanted to go and have a look at and there's a route and when i come back to do that maybe then We'll go down and find the confluence of the Graveny and the Wandle. That's a good, that's a good tie-in, because I felt like we're going to walk through Tooting and not include any of the stuff I've just been reading about Tooting, so that makes sense. I'll walk up here a little bit and I'll do my sign-off. Thank you for joining me on that Riverine Odyssey along the Norbury Brook, another classic. You can judge a walk for me on how it makes me feel, and I've had a beautiful feeling on this walk, and thank you for coming along with me. Uh, another plug for my book. There you go, plug for my book. <laughs> <laughs> exists. I might put up in the coming weeks um, uh, extract of the video I filmed of one of the launch nights. Would you be interested in seeing that? It is just me sat on a stage and it was live streamed on my phone, but the audio is good quality. Um, anyway, <laughs> as I always like to say, I look forward to seeing you in the next walk, wherever that may be. It's going to be somewhere epic. It's going to be amazing. I can't wait. Take care. Well, I've just signed off, but look what I've just stumbled across a wonderful little bookshop here called Occasional Books. Look at this. This will be the uh, this will be the exit shot of the video. That is an amazing shop. That's like the shops you used to find in London that you don't find anymore. Come down here, Stretton Vale, occasional books. It's amazing.